They call it the Danish experiment. A source of pride for the country's 17,000 farmers. The food uh, consists of uh, wheat, uh, barley and oat, uh, soya, and a mineral mix, and no antibiotics here. Unlike industrial farms in the U.S., which use antibiotics to promote growth and prevent disease, Danish farmers use antibiotics sparingly, only when animals are sick. The experiment to stop widespread use of antibiotics was launched 12 years ago, when European studies showed a link between animals who were consuming antibiotic feed every day and people developing antibiotic-resistant infections from handling or eating that meat. We don't want to use more medicine than needed. And a lot of the medicine that is given is not needed. 35-year-old Soren Helmer is a second-generation pig farmer whose sows produce more than 30,000 pigs a year. When the ban started, he and his father thought the industry would suffer. We thought we could not produce pigs as efficient as we did before. But that has proven wrong. In fact, since the ban, the Danish pork industry has grown by 43 percent, making it one of the top exporters of pork in the world. All of Europe followed suit in 2006, but the American pork industry doesn't want to. What we've seen in Denmark and other countries is that they actually have had some increases in cost of what it takes to produce a pig. And so it's not that um, unqualified success. If we did the same thing in the United States, we'd have more sick and dying pigs, and none of that would result in a benefit to the U.S. consumer. Without using growth-promoting antibiotics, it costs only $5 more for every 100 pounds of pork brought to market in the U.S. That's a small price for public health, says Dr. Ellen Silbergeld, who's been studying the antibiotic resistance link between livestock and people for the past decade. I think the Danish and European experience indicate that there will be real and measurable public health benefits. There will be improvements in food safety and actually in the prevalence of drug-resistant infections in people. According to one study, when different countries introduced certain antibiotics on farms, a surge occurred in people contracting antibiotic-resistant intestinal infections one to two years later. One, Campylobacter, increased 20 percent in Denmark and 70 percent in Spain. After the ban, a Danish study confirmed that removing antibiotics from farms drastically reduced antibiotic-resistant bacteria in animals and food. Danish scientists believe if the U.S. doesn't stop pumping its farm animals with antibiotics, drug-resistant diseases in people will only spread. It's not going to be a time bomb that goes out, off like this. It's something that slowly will you know, make it more and more complicated and more and more difficult for us to treat infections, bacterial infections. Some American food producers agree. It's just gone too far. Stephen McDonald is the CEO of the American food company, Applegate Farms. What most bothers you about the way industrial farmers in this country currently operate? We use too many antibiotics. We use too many growth promotants. The singular focus is to create cheap meat. And that's not always the best thing for the health of the Americans who buy it. And so we think with some subtle changes, giving them more space, feeding them a good diet, and not stressing them out by growing them too quickly, you don't even need to use antibiotics. McDonald helps farmers like Dwayne Cook kick the habit. How long have you been raising turkeys, Dwayne, without using antibiotics? So we started growing them without antibiotics roughly uh, 14 years ago. Wow, for a long time then. Yeah, we were one of the first ones. Does know. it make you feel better doing oh, yeah. it this and, way? And Yeah, because really, from using the antibiotics for so long, a lot of them really didn't work well anyway anymore. Today, his 18 poultry farms scattered throughout Pennsylvania are more profitable than when he used antibiotics. Wow, a lot of turkeys. A lot of turkeys. Cook says it costs very little to convert a farm to antibiotic-free, and it doesn't cost consumers much more either. People buying antibiotic-free turkey thigh meat will spend around $1.40 per pound versus $1.20 for conventionally raised birds. 
Cook says higher quality feed and better living conditions make his birds naturally healthier. And what's the importance of giving them more space? That's our natural growth hormone. I mean, by giving them more space, we can get weights that are really close to what they're getting with the growth hormone. Because farmers are raising livestock successfully without growth promoting antibiotics from Lebanon, Pennsylvania to outside Copenhagen, <laughs> public health officials in this country say this is an idea whose time has come. We have identified here that we're talking about a public health issue, that the overuse of antibiotics on farms does pose a risk to human health. The FDA has for the first time come out against using certain antibiotics to promote growth in livestock, and pending legislation in Congress would ban some types of antibiotics used to treat humans from being administered to healthy farm animals. You can find more information posted on our website at cbsnews.com.